and many things with that. It's just in the past. So I'm a little surprised that the same mistakes were repeated. You come here. But that clearly shows if you don't repeat what you do every day, you're bound to get. And that's what happens. Classical, classical scenario. Let's go back and I start with the history. And let me tell you, they're both very good students. I have a very good impression of them. In the class they do once a week. This is not exactly how you it. This is exactly how you should not present. Make sure that you don't do it that way. You're much better than that. The problem is that you didn't get an opportunity in the past. Am I right? And you probably were not taught. So let's, let's sort it out with you. This is fine. This is fine. And don't think that was good enough to be anywhere in any medical school of the country or the world. That, don't think that was always be confident of this. Feel that you are the best. Otherwise, nobody else is going to say it to you. You will hold it up. Which was apparently well one month back when she wrote it, the swelling in the left side of the neck, which was serious, gradual. This was fine. Moving on technique, swallowing, if she could tell you she is also very smart. You don't need to mention that. Any problem? Similar com complaint. Or she wouldn't know this. Mm -hmm. so, and if you write this on top, then why have you written the rest? And then if you've written the rest, why have you written this on top? I mean, all these questions are for you to answer. You will be cursing yourself. Most of your similar complaint in the past. When? You mean thyroid swelling? You say there is no issue of any previous neck swelling. Similar complaint, which means all the things that you are trying to put together, and you left it for the examiner to analyze which all are important, you pick up. No history of hypothyroidism in the past. Not required. On top, you already mentioned something which, I mean, there's no history of any thyroid related disorder in the past. Okay, if you're very keen, you have not interested in that. If there was, you would tell. <coughs> this is a good history. No history of extra exposure to the neck region of the childhood. This should have come on top. It would make sense. We yeah, are first to our total, classical garbage, that nicely. You know present or past history of tuberculosis, present history of tuberculosis, she would tell you. Then she would figure the present in your brain. It's not necessary. Yes, past history of tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. Why you're trying to do a tubercular cause for a leak. Hypertension diabetes, as one we've discussed so many times, they are never a past history. Because once diabetic always a diabetic, once hypertensive always a hypertensive. Now this is this is useful because with the correction that will happen, all of you will also learn that these mistakes do happen, and you can correct them for future. So learn from the others' mistakes too. No sure any surgery in the past. That takes care of it. Why should I mention about fibroid? Why fibroid? She had a strictly for fibroid. Surgical history of mistake for fibroid, that's fine. No 
question of substance abuse, use normal sleeping pattern, this is okay. Positive history was heart malignancy, and brother who died in the course of treatment in the way, but this is important, useful. You could have mentioned here also, no history of similar complaints in the family. This happens all the time. That would again be a wrong history. Be specific in family history. Don't be non-specific. That's what I'm trying to say. No history of any other cancer in the family. Perfect. Now start the problem. Journal examination, you've done exactly like you're taught in medicine, and that too from a very ordinary book. Things have changed. Mm -hmm. You don't describe head, face, neck, eye, etc., etc., etc. Journal examination is, as we discussed in the opening, patient was examined in the well lit room. And remember, you're saying was. Mm -hmm. I stick to that. After informed consent and sitting position. So, patient was examined. What does it mean that the consent was taken in the second position? You wrote as you speak. And how you speak, you would know. The patient was examined in sitting position after taking his conference. What's the problem? She was very only to the time in person, healthy built. You don't need it. Built, normal. Performance status, nutrition status, BMI, patient was well hydrated. Addition status group. So mention the last case. Was, 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 patient, 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 it becomes a monotonous nonsense. Patients, performance status, addition status, nutrition status is normal. BMI being this one. Temperature now we don't need. This is classically where it looked like a nurse's chart. A febrile, pulse rate this much, rest is fine, respiration this much, BP this much. Now this is exactly head to toe, you think, so, you know, head to toe. You start here and then down. Eye is normal. Everything is normal. So exam general examination was otherwise normal. And for the specific features of thyroid, I'll describe it along with the examination of thyroid. You are necessarily wasting time here. Because these will have to be described anyway. Eyes. And no clubbing. Is there anywhere else you look for clubbing? So if there's no clubbing, it's not in the hand or no tremors were. Don't be ridiculous, actually, you too much physician like. Examination of the neck. Now the swelling is situated. I told you, remember, was. Did I say in the beginning? Was, he said, it was right. Now the swelling is situated. Now you don't need to write all these sentences. There is a swelling in the, on the left side of the neck, you move the neck tissue. And below after this time was whatever. Now again the swelling was the classical mistake that happened. And probably a error. Five to five and spherical in a sphere. Three-dimensional sphere is a spheroidal sphere. And there is no spheroidal swelling ever. Why? What is the sign you mentioned? You cannot see the underlying surface. Oh boy. Oh, globular and be done with it. Don't waste your time and market time. Globular swelling, well-defined mark margin, with moved on respiration, is moved all over the place. So it's very simple. Moving on, deglutition. And remember you mentioned somewhere moves on provision of tongue, that's a disaster. No, you don't have to mention that. It's just testing. Then you'll be asked to do that test. I've done it in your classroom. That the problem with this is that you will have to demonstrate this test and you'll do it wrongly and you'll be in trouble and it's not indicated here. The tongue production test is only done in midline, above, upper, small swellings. And the process. If you're doing it in a lower, lateral swelling, it opens up. That's why there is double negative marking. One, you don't know about the thyroid processes and you also don't know about the thyroid. So that, that is not required, it's unnecessary, like a lot of things that you should do. So, we are here, moves on degradation, still normal. Now there is some punctum business here. What is this punctum going here? You're thinking about some sebaceous cyst here? You must be joking. Sebaceous cyst is a genius way. You already mentioned moving on degradation. It's deep to deep phase here. This is unnecessary, you know. 
ฟังเจ้าพระวอดSays we'll do percussion on the sternum, and if it is not dull, it is all. But it is an old way done. It's similar to somebody percussing a hernia. You cannot percuss it unless it is fixed. That you cannot do. And even if you percuss a hernia, it will always be dull. I haven't seen any hernia which is resonant. Because there are too many layers through which you have to send the signal. So it won't just happen. These tests. So, on auscultation, no bruise was heard. Is there any bruise that you can hear on palpation? Can you hear a bruise on palpation, sir? So this doesn't need to be mentioned. On auscultation, no bruise heard. I'm sure that's heard. What is the big deal? On palpation, is good. There is no bruise heard, and that doesn't come in here. Let's don't divide your presentation. I think we've done that in the past. Don't divide it into inspection, palpation, percussion, auscultation. Work that up. Don't stick to prayer five times. 
that particular time, the devotee is elected, including God, who we they must be starting now. That's not required. You just stick to the common sense examination, which I am trying to teach you each time. Percussion not required here. You simply say there is no retrospective experience. That's enough. And suppose you percuss also, if you can appreciate resonance, then I can find out some sense in other There is no sense. Is that clear? Normal. That's okay. Now, 65 year old lady, not female, who came with the swelling, you told us 10 times. She came, she came, and she came. That is not required here. It's a diagnosis. So, 65 year old lady with with swelling in the left neck. 65 year old female with a swelling on the left side in the neck and most of the benign. With a chief complaint of swelling in the A chief complaint. Sudra. 65 year old female presenting presenting with the next one. 65 year old lady with a swelling in the thyroid for some second degree of thyroid swelling. Of benign nature. 65 year old lady with now, what is the thyroid selling called in by Indian people? Quieter. Mm -hmm. 65 year lady with a multinormal goiter or a solitary thyroid only? Solitary thyroid only. The classification is. Sorry? Yeah. What is the multinormal goiter only? Multinodular goita, it's more indicative of uh, toxic. Sorry, that nodule is only palpate, just a nodule and rest of the gland is not palpable. Okay. That is clear? Yes, sir. Baki sub to have only one nodule. Goita. If there are more nodules, if the thyroid is palpable, okay. you don't feel the rest of the gland here, just one. And that doesn't, I mean, there is no such thing as the thyroid nodule has to be this size. It can be any size. So, a 65 year old lady, not a female, with a solid thyroid nodule on the left side, clinically benign, and new thyroid with no pressure symptoms. That's the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And I have taught you that. Repeat now, with that. A 65 year old lady with thyroid swelling in the left side only. Sit down. Stand up again. Repeat. A 65 year old lady with thyroid nodule. With solid thyroid nodule. Is the diagnosis clear? The presentation clear? The mistakes clear? And I will fix them clear. Is it clear to you? Yes. Don't do those mistakes. It only happens when you don't present regularly. It's not that you don't know. But you will be surprised that when you are presenting, so many things you don't know. Unless you do it. In the exam, we are all, all of you, are actually the spinal features, you know, cortical. So many things that you repeatedly do would come out spontaneously, and as you start doing well, the brain starts functioning. Which was happening as you were starting. There's no point in getting it. So let's start with the understanding of the case. First, when you're taking the history, any patient with a thyroid swelling would be quite classical. There's usually no no way you can mess it up. So what are things, what are what is it that you're looking for in this case and what would the examiner expect you to do? First, he would want you to make a diagnosis that it's a goiter, which mm. would be that you should be able to clinically make out it's a thyroid swelling. Now what are the characteristics of a thyroid swelling is that? It is present in thyroid fossa, first thing. If it's not present there, it won't be a thyroid swelling. Mm. Number two, it moves on degradation. Three. Now, there could be clinical signs relating to thyroid disorders like thyrotoxicosis or hypothyroidism. These are the four features. So, first thing you've got to establish in your exam is it's a thyroid swelling. And a thyroid swelling is called a goiter. Mm. So, it's a case of goiter. It's not a case of a swelling in the neck which is lying in the thyroid portion that you would have sorted out earlier. Now, once it's a goiter, it can be a solitary thyroid nodule or a multinodal goiter. 
Now, solid is that nodule is a is a situation where there is a nodule, which is the only one, and the rest of the gland is not valid. It's important to say that. We don't say that. I don't think it is common sense because normal thyroid gland is not palpable. The moment it is palpable, it's pathology. Some people argue the neck is very narrow, very thin. A normal gland could be palpated. Then it's an abnormal gland, or the abnormal vision. Hmm. You can't say it's a normal scenario. Number two, the, the thyroid fossa boundaries are suprastral notch, thyroid cartilage, and sternal of mesoderm. Yeah, there is no confusion about it. And why do we need to know about thyroid fossa and its boundary? It's exactly like parotid region and its boundary, which we discuss very often. Hmm. The Diagonal process, mastoid process, vertical line drawn, another horizontal line drawn across the angle of the mandible, and from the midpoint of the diagonal process. So you get a square which is parotid region. And the significance of parotid region is any swelling lying there is a parotid swelling unless proven otherwise. So that takes care of it for, for the time being. Coming back to thyroid again, so I will go by its location. Then I'll go by its movement and deglutition. You will be definitely 100. Out of 100 times asked, why does it move the region? Answer that smartly, that is shabbily answer. Don't just, so it is, it is kind of attached to one, two different, one different area. No, wrong. It is encased, thyroid is encased in pre-tracheal fascia, which gets condensed on, see, thyroid is actually hanging. Mm. Is there is no lower extension of this fascia. This fascia is just like an envelope, it's carrying it. And the envelope is attached somewhere. the coil cartilage, the and then cartilage. there is a connection with the constrictor, which is attached to larynx, larynx. and you know the the, 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 the process or the, the mechanism, you will be asked. Is that clear? Yes. So moving on deglutition becomes the next important feature of that. In the moment you say it's moving on deglutition, the rest is all nonsense. Skin normal, so and so normal, there is make no sense. And punctum, if you mention next time, uh, I will see you next time. <laughs> now, if you really carefully observe, these mistakes are very innocent, not post mistakes, but they are blunders. Why? Because they clearly tell me that we do not even know what is the plane of the swelling. This is the third question that we always ask. I am discussing the brass text. Third question, what is the plane of the swelling? Your answer would be deep to deep fascia. Next question, what are the layers of deep fascia? Deep cervical fascia. Mm -hmm. Investing layer and pre what is the investing layer? It invests yes. stenomestoids, strap puzzles, carotid and intangible away, and then goes over to join in the center, which you open up. And I was doing thyroid experience yesterday. We saw the deep facial development was investing layer. Now, the other layer is the tracheal, which goes behind like this, and it kind of closes within it, the thyroid. And then gets attached above, and that's how it is. Then the fifth question comes. You found out it's a thyroid cell. Now you, they'll ask you to demonstrate certain tests. One of those who mentioned. It's not enough to say in general examination. There were no uh, hammers or anything. You will mention in your examination of the thyroid no signs of hypo or hyperthyroidism and no signs of toxicity. Then the sixth question becomes what are the signs of toxicity? The signs of toxicity are again divided into neurological. And cardiac. What are the neurological signs? So quickly. Signs. Signs are you demonstrating. One demonstrate for you. Okay, talk to Examination. Yes. Central tremors. Tremors in the IT. Tremors in the IT. Eye signs. Most of them are actually different. You Cardiological signs are very few. Mm -hmm. And don't divide thyroid oxygen based on the signs. It's another mistake. Mm -hmm. Point number seven. Where the mistake is, secondary thyroid oxygen, oh, where the cardiovascular symptoms are more prominent. Primary, where the neurological. Because then, and then some smart person will explain to you, neuro first, primary. Cardiac goes down, secondary. Big X. It's wrong. There's got nothing to do with some.
both have both. Both have both. That is primary and secondary, both have neurological and cardiological signs. And these signs are due to what? Good. It's not due to excessive paroxysm. It's extra sensitivity of the receptors. The receptors become extra sensitive. Therefore, there is a role of blocking the receptors. That's why these are blockers. You have lots and lots of thyroxine in your body. But the receptors are blocked by beta blockers. Point nine. Don't ask me where is eight. Because I'm just taking a chance. I hope I have to go from eight into another eight. Now, uh, okay, nine. The ninth point is, once you are examining for these signs, you have to learn to demonstrate these right signs, which you did not mention. What are the various eye signs? What is the signs? The symbol of the first player, the double motion, there is big lag, there is terrible sign, and there is Mogia sign, there is difficulty in conversion of the eyes, and the chocolate sign, there is increased blinking of the eyes. Decreased blinking. In the frontal, Joffrey sign is absence of wrinkling over the forehead. Now the whole thing is again all over the place. The mild, moderate and severe. severe sign. Mild, the first one is the spoken of stale red. Hmm. It's a stale. 60 centimeters, you look into the eyes of the patient. Uh, and the one who blinks first is not. Hmm. Here, it's not who blinks. Degrees blink. The winner here is the one who blinks first. Here. And number two. Immediately after you move to moderate, one graphics, one graphics. and job project, they're together. Mm -hmm. And I'll do that by fixing the head. Okay. And my one thing I would do all the test. Go up, mm -hmm. no job project, no ring. Mm -hmm. And I can move it all around and look for little lag. One graphics sorted. Why be a senior? Mm -hmm. 60 centimeters. Don't go far to try to bring a bird from nowhere. And uh, Moebius is severe again. That is neck triggers for which you need to go behind. Mm -hmm. And extend the neck. Try to look at the supra of the mm -hmm. bridge. You see the cornea. At the end of it, follow a pattern and you finish. Now, point 10. You come down to the tremors. And she said the right knee, center tremor. Central tremors are the tongue, and you don't need to project the tongue completely. If the tongue is completely out, the extensive muscles are taut. They neuron the tremors. You need to have them halfway down. The tongue is half off, and you look at it from the lateral side. The sign is there. Best thing to look for: the fine tremors, the fingers. The best thing is to be outstretched and extended and hyper extended because you want to utilize the short, the long muscles, so then you can look at short, short muscles. These muscles are for the tremors. Take up, take up quickly. Lumbricles. 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 So you're wrong, but close. Lumbricles would be tested by hypertension. Okay. And the best thing is you put a paper, then you switch on the fan, the paper is all over the place, it won't work. The best thing is to put the paper down, fingers up, show the light from above, you can see a projection, which is multiplied many times. If the shadow is, you can know shadow means, the shadow is much bigger, and the fine tremors that we get in best. This is my opinion, so you use it. So the light from above, you can see the paper. You see that signs are, brilliantly you can see the fine tremors. But before you test the person, test yourself, because if you don't know what is actually tremors, you won't be able to see. Then comes the question of the done the neurological system. Look for three things that makes a demo. This is an important part in terms of that interesting stuff. That's a sign of thyrotoxicosis. It's a non-fitting edema in the street field. And then you get down to the business of swelling. Swelling is examined like any other swelling. 
and it is rarely that you will find any time in your life a steroid is given. So it's safe to say, because the other side it will never be. So call it globular and get away with it. Don't call it ovoid and get into that trouble. For that you need to be able to go behind. And then it will be very foolish to mention the dimensions which are not the same. You call it the spherical means that the sphere is one dimension. Rest was fine, so we have a case of thyroid swelling, a solitary thyroid nodule. The discussion about the case can go on and on. We have talked to thyroid. And those will be remembered to read it, watch whatever you put on the YouTube. Now coming to the you have written solitary thyroid nodule, there's nothing wrong with that. Benign is also correct. And you will pass with 50%. 50% is as well as failing. So 65 year lady. With a solitary thyroid nodule, clinically benign, from and new thyroid, with no compression symptoms. That will complete your. Why do you say it is a solitary thyroid nodule? Why do you say she is 65 years old? That's not your problem. Why do you say it is a thyroid swelling? I answer. Why do you say it is a solitary thyroid nodule? You answer. Why do you say it is benign? Examination and history. That part is covered. Why you thought that? Points in history, it's not done. Basically, how do you approach it? It's going to wind up. Starting from the therapist. Just on history and examination. Yes. Investigation to confirm. Investigation to confirm, diagnose, stage. I was asking you all just to give him time to wake up. Stage, the disease. And to watch it later. So to, to stage, to confirm, if it is support, and if it is malignancy, then stage. So you don't stay in the relax. You call it the relax. What do you do to confirm? Preferably on some guy. Mm -hmm. Even in thyroid now there is a triple assessment. We call it triple test. Clinical examination, imaging, and now this is next. Like in breast, you have four biopsy or anything. More you want to please. So you've done that, and uh, depending on what you find, then when you're saying investigation to confirm the diagnosis, please look at your diagnosis. We gave you the diagnosis. It's a thyroid disease which you can confirm. Benign. I mean, we need to do ultrasound and definite along with Some people feel that if the patient is, PSS is low, if she's toxic, then you don't do it. This is not in your case. Finding the not be useful because malignancy is uncommon in toxic. Malignancy does not secrete. Mm -hmm. Parent, the malignancy doesn't function, so you won't get toxic features. And then to uh, support, You've done ultrasound, you've done uh, FNA, and you have a diagnosis and something like that. Other investigations do IDL, X-ray, soft tissue, neck. Yes, sir. X-ray, neck. Next to neck. All this will happen. Finally, we'll have. Next to neck, What do you do for that? Fitness. Surgery. Fitness. Is the key to the choice. And surgery would be? Any questions? You finish the case. I didn't get the question. Physiological? And pathological tremor. Repeat, repeat. Oh, physiological and pathological tremor. There is no physiological tremor ever. 
So therefore, I would never differentiate. Anytime time tremor is pathological. Your question should be, how to differentiate it from one due to thyrotoxicosis and the other one due to anxiety? The answer you can't. You have to exclude the history of anxiety. You can't do tremors in the midnight. Don't, the answer is not sleeping tremors. A sleeping pulse rate as we have for this. Sleeping pulse rate is for checking for tachycardia, which could be due to anxiety. You take a history of anxiety. The other difference is, I'm, I'm not taking completely away. Anxiety tremors are not such fine tremors. That's why thyrotoxicosis tremors you look for. It's very difficult to differentiate. Unless you're really looking uh, for that minute, because there is an element of anxiety even in toxic patients. They all lack any of that. Any other question? There's a protocol writing workshop at 2 o'clock, which I have to conduct to the TDs. And uh, therefore, that's what I told you guys. But I didn't want to cancel your class, and I realized it was so very, very important. And it was a disaster rating. So, you're sitting on a ticking time bomb. Any time you can go. Tomorrow is presenting. Should be in the there is somebody presenting tomorrow to you? Thank you. If the case didn't come to you, there is a case in the ward, go and see it. These are useless excuses for somebody, to somebody who is always in the ward. So I know what is lying there. You went around, they didn't get it. Give them a patient, they didn't give them a patient in the ward. There is a 